Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So since completing the fixtures for the dress shop bathroom, I realize I really can't go much further completing the bathroom until I actually create a door. Now, the doorways in the dress shop are a lot smaller than the standard doors that are made by most of the mass-produced companies, and I really didn't want to get in to try to cut bigger door openings because I think the wood is a little bit fragile. So I went on to make my own doors. Now, again, this door design is very simple, very basic, but I didn't want it to look too juvenile. I really wanted it to look like a nice door so that it would match and complement the room or the aesthetic of the house. So I tried to just create my own design with some spare parts. Now, this is a coffee stir stick that I'm using with some plank pieces of wood that I bought in a bundle off eBay. And it was really great because they were the perfect width. So I just had to cut it to make it the proper length. Now, I'm just trying to think of a way to design the outside of the door. There are lots of different door designs as far as the panels. Again, I wanted to stay within scale. I didn't want the trim to overwhelm the small door because it definitely is smaller and narrower than my standard doors that are on the rooming house. So I played around with a couple different ideas. And so I'm going to just let you follow along and watch and see what I did. So I started off with my birch wood coffee stir sticks to create a border around the edges. And I really was liking that idea because I felt like it kept the scale small. It didn't overwhelm the size of the door. But right smack in the middle of that idea, I had another idea. I had these pieces of flooring strips laying around and I thought I'd like to try and see how that would look. And I like it because it's really thin, so it's not gonna add bulk or thickness to the door, which is something I was concerned with because I didn't want the doors to end up being thicker than the actual walls. So I opted to go ahead and use these instead of the birch wood stick to create my panels for my door. Now this was really cool because these pieces are really easy to cut. Literally, I could cut them with my scissors. I totally felt like I was cheating, but I felt like I was justified because I felt like the other things I wanted to do in the house were way more interesting and needed more attention than the doors. So that was my justification for this behavior. So right at that point, I decided that I didn't want to use the strips for everything. So I wanted to use the birch wood strips for the outer edge or perimeter of the door and that I would use the veneer wood grain pieces to design the center. Now, Dallas, I'm not always that person who decides everything before I start. Many times I go ahead and start and I figure it out in the middle so here i'm allowing you to see how i'm playing around with the design of the center of the door before i finalize everything with glue i always do my dry fit tri fit to make sure that i'm happy with the look and that it matches the idea in my head so i went on to add the birchwood sticks around the perimeter I didn't show it here, but I did sand the door and round it off the side where it would be attached to the door frame with a simple pin hinge. So dolls, I ended up doing a very simple design, more or less a variation of the four panel door. I'm really glad now I went with the combination of the birch wood sticks and the veneer. I think it gave the door a lot more dimension and interest. And although the door is very simple, it wasn't complicated. I think the little door turned out really nice and it'll work really well with the feeling of the house. Now it's time for me to add the finish and the hardware. My original idea for hardware for my doorknob was to grab something out of my stash, age them, and just glue them on. But I realized very quickly that that was not gonna work because the door panel is not wide enough to support the key plate for that particular type of doorknob. So I decided to default to what I used to do as a little girl. Although I wasn't allowed to wear earrings as a little girl, I did use thumbtacks and nail heads and pin tops to make handles and doorknobs in those days. And I realized I had a little stash of dollar store earrings in one of my craft bags, and I felt like they would be perfect to simulate glass or crystal doorknobs. 
Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, I need to go ahead and make a frame. I did go ahead and use the birch wood coffee stir sticks to create a frame around the door. And while creating the frame, I noticed that I had some gaps in the seams of the door that I need to go ahead and fill before I stain it. And I do use the plastic wood putty to fill in those little gaps. Make sure you inspect and fill both sides of the door before you allow it to dry. Now while my wood putty was drying, I went on to drill in the opening for my pin hinge. Now I did pause for a moment and try this bathroom door inside the sewing room door to make sure that the template was right because if it fits the bathroom door and it fits the sewing room door, I can go ahead and just duplicate it, which is what I did. Now after thing, everything was solid and dry, and I tried it on the door frame. I was really happy with it. You know, I already drilled the hole at the top. So now it's time for me to go ahead and to attach it to the actual frame. Now I used a straight pin and added a little glob of the Gorilla Wood Glue onto the tip of the pin, which is the part that I stick down into the door. Always be very careful and watchful of your fingers, dolls, when you're doing this. And after I fitted that end, I went on to drill the other end. Then I went on to make a frame for my second door and then went on to prep it for staining as well. Now here I am adding the straight pin through the actual door frame into the door to create the hinge. While adding the hinge, I realized I didn't need the fourth side of the frame and I decided to actually remove it and actually just make my frame a three-sided door frame. Now I'm pretty sure that this is against the manual of the dollhouse code of conduct, but it's what I did dolls to make my doorway work. Now you won't be able to see it from the outside of the dollhouse. I know it's like that, but it's not gonna hurt the function and I don't think the dolls will mind either. I went back to my stash and found two more earrings for the second door, for the front and the back of the door. They're really sparkly. They look really cute. I'm really, really glad I took a moment to dig through my bag of what are you keeping that for to find just what I needed. Up to this point, I was feeling really good. I was really excited and I was ready to add color to the door. And for some odd reason, I was convinced that I wanted the door to be cream or white. And I used this ivory color and started to paint it. And almost immediately after I started to paint it, I decided I really, really hated it. And I just stared at it for a minute. Dolls, I truly have no idea what I was thinking at that moment. So right away, I began to try to remove the paint before it set in too deep and ruined the opportunity to actually add stain. Not sure what I was thinking because I had already stained the other door. So I went on to try to match the stain job for both of the doors because one of them, the wood was a little bit darker. So I was trying to add the red oak and the Jacobean stain so that they would end up with similar tones. Oops, sorry, Laura. Now dolls, I do want to apologize. I allowed little Gretchen to get out and she's doing a pretty sloppy job staining these doors here. I consulted her regarding the doorknobs and now she's just trying to take over the entire project. Now after wiping off some of the stain, little Gretchen had got all over everything. I realized there was a part of the door that had gotten glue spillage and it wasn't accepting the stain. You can see it there, that little light area, that's where the glue spilled. And I was hoping I could sand it down and possibly reapply the stain. So today I was using some random sandpaper that was given to me. And I realized my sanding job was really, really easy. And I'm really impressed with this sandpaper and I realized today that some sandpaper is just better. So here are my two upstairs interior doors completed. Completed, stained, and my doorknobs are added. And I only found three earrings, so one of the doorknobs is a little bit different. And here I am adding on the door frame. And here is my completed door ready to be installed in the house. And I'm just showing you here what it looks like with the missing fourth frame. And everything is ready to be installed. So now that the door is ready, I can go ahead and wrap up this bathroom. So dolls, here we are in the dress shop bathroom. I've already pre-cut the pieces of subway tiles. And I cut it to go a little higher on the wall, which is a more vintage look. So here's a quick glance at the walls before I add the wallpaper. 
And here's the walls after I've installed the beautiful blue print. I think it looks really great. It's so crazy to me that this looks like a real house renovation. So here I'm just giving you a glance. My door is installed and I've got the base of the door frame weighted down to make sure it stays in place. Got a big block of granite in there just to stabilize everything while it dries. And I'm just showing you here. Fits really neat above the at the door jam at the top and it swings open nicely and everything will look great after I trim it out with the wood. So I know this is an awkward angle, but you see how easily the door opens and I'm excited. Oh, it's cute. I'm peeking out the window. I can see my little window boxes. I like that they look real from the inside view. <laughs> so guys, I'm just giving you a close up view of where the wallpaper and the tile meet and how I created a border by cutting the wallpaper in half because I didn't have anything to trim it off. And I think that looks good. I really like how they meet and how smooth and neat it looks. Now I have to deal with that ceiling. But right now I'm really, really just satisfied with the wallpaper and the tile. So I was thinking about doing the copper ceiling, but I decided I really don't like it because it's disrupting the mode I'm trying to capture for the bathroom. Dolls, I just keep staring at the bathroom because to me it looks so real, except for the big binder clip on the floor. I'm so excited. My mind is just bubbling with ideas. So let me focus. Here I slowed down the video because I wanted to see how I played with the lighting to see how it would look in different lights. And it just looks very realistic to me. I'm just so tickled about it. So let me go ahead and show you what I did regarding the floor. Now you guys know in a previous video I was thinking of using the yellow tile paper like I used in the rooming house. But I had this remnant sheet with a tile pattern to it. I thought it was nice. It's white and I think it really complements the subway tile. And this is just a sheet. I'm just laying it in there. And here's a quick glance at the one that I used in the rooming house, which is what I was going to use. And yeah, no, I'm going to go ahead and use this white because I think it gives the feeling that I'm trying to capture for this house. And here it is, dolls. The bathroom floor has been installed. I really, really love the pattern because it's a very subtle pattern type and it doesn't fight with the subway tile, but it still gives a really clean, sanitary, almost sterile look to the bathroom, I guess, except for the door. I'm so excited about being at this stage. I need to do window treatments, at least some window shades. So Aunt Bess and Aunt Janie will feel comfortable moving in. Now to the inquiry about where the super thanks button is it's under the three little dots near the like button and to those who are not getting their notifications to when i upload videos i'm always here on mondays and wednesdays after 7 30 p.m eastern standard time and dolls if you've enjoyed this video today definitely let me know in the comments also like share and subscribe and i'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of little gretchen's workshop bye bye now dolls